Hey, it's uh, Daryl as a service for Regarding 365. I'm here with, uh, you know, Simon Denton. Yeah. Yep. And we're introducing Tan or CJ? CJ. CJ, CJ Tan. CJ. Yeah, so Project Cortex. Um, it's a big announcement here today at uh, Microsoft Ignite. This way of being able to create knowledge networks. Um, it, it, there's a lot to learn and, and we've had quite a high level view of things. What would you say is the, the big benefit for an organization to start using Project Cortex? I think the main benefit is that we're, we're using it to bring you knowledge where you're actually working, right in the flow of things at the right time at the right place. So you're not interrupted um, and you're not, you don't have to context switch to find what you're looking for if you don't understand. So that looks like it's, it's taken advantage of the cards that we're used to seeing and hovering over people and seeing detail. And now it's branching out to, to topics and acronyms? Topics and I, I mean, we when we look at what a topic is, an acronym is really just like a property of it. You call things in different ways, so that, that project name you have, you might refer to it as an acronym. So it comes together and what we want to be able to do is just be able to recognize it when it's an acronym as well as when it's sort of a full word. Right. So Simon, um, you're from Mott McDonald and, yeah. and you're one of the, the private preview customers. Yeah. How has this been played out in, in the private preview? Do you, that card, is it becoming quite useful? I think it will be useful. I mean, at the moment, all we see is blocked JSON yes, at the moment. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but we can see the potential, and right. see how it's all going to come together. And I think what it'll do is to take away the stress and strain of tagging stuff. Yes. That, yeah. I mean, it's such a high premium. Oh, just add this topic to the thing you're doing. People don't do it. Right. So the fact the system can do it for you, you can create the inputs. It's going to make life a lot easier. That has been the ongoing challenge for SharePoint for years. Is we know the value of metadata and making information easy to capture, but we can't get people to add the words. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what is what is Project Cortex using to try and pick up these words? How does it know what is a key word and a key topic? Uh, well, we are using uh, some some new AI tech that's never been productized before, coming out of our research group. And it's effectively taking extracts from the content that you have and um, filtering it and clustering it until it finds enough evidence that it's, it's actually got a proper talk. Right, so it's, it's building and curating and then looking at all the signals of yeah. people interacting with this information. And I think that the, the other key thing to note is that it is AI and that we have a component where a person can come in and actually curate it, actually help it out. So right. any signals that the person does afterwards telling us it's a good topic, fixing the definition, we take back uh, and improve Im improve the next time we try to look at it. So there might still be a, a role for a person to help optimize the results in the there search? Absolutely oh, is. Yeah. I think it's I think we need it together. Right. It's, yeah. it's just uh, Building trust, building the, uh, the information, keeping it alive. I right. think AI helps, but we still need the person there. So, but because it's AI, um, it's going to learn from me telling it how to recognize certain patterns. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Right, so instead of me always fixing up the search results and giving best bets, it's going to learn, learn from that. Right. Yeah. So, and another example I see there too is that it recognizes experts. Yeah that are talking about a topic. Yeah. So what's happening there? So really the topics are extending the Microsoft Graph. And in the Microsoft Graph, we already have a way that we're connecting to information through people, right? It's your network, people you work with, and your hierarchy. What we're adding into this dimension with topics is a different way to organize it, where the people are still there. But now you can talk to a person that you may not have ever worked with before. But because you're working on a related topic, you have a reason to, to connect with them. And that's where we see the power. People know the person near them, or if they've got a problem to solve, they ask one person and another person. But there's a very limited sphere of knowledge. And it allows you to punch that sphere and ask the entire organization and bring the right person back to the situation. So we, we were kind of doing that with uh, the likes of Yammer, where we would put a question out there and say, hey, I need an answer, but we didn't know who was going to answer it. Now Project Cortex is going to help narrow that down. Yeah, it's yeah. going to give you some really good signals and hints. Actually, I know you're throwing the question out there, but actually, you know, Daryl knows the right answer, or CJ is the best person. It will help guide you and start help you start the conversation. Right. Where are we going to see places to have conversations about that content? Is it going to matter where and what platform we choose? You mean as far as how we're surfacing the topic cards? So you're, you're surfacing the topic card and you're saying that, say, Simon is an expert in a certain topic. Let's have a conversation. 
um, is, there, is there a way that it brings that out into a public sphere, like in Yammer or in a, an org-wide team? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely uh, on our roadmap to take, to take these topics into all the apps that are in Microsoft 365. Right. Right. Um, and to, to really have it so that when you say one thing, it means the same thing across the that's, that's really what I What I've actually seen recently happening, and I don't know if it's because we're in MVP tenants, but I already see things like, oh, there's an acronym in here. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. is that something that's setting up to help the project cortex? Yeah. There's already AI going on yeah. to help that, that story. Yeah, you're already oh, seeing some of the AI that's that's from uh, Microsoft Search. Right. So that's the component yeah. from that side. It shows you how the different teams are pulling together. So built there exactly. with search, so yeah, the acronym points are coming up on the cards. That's permeating down to Windows, you know, being it's all over into applications and to get Cortex and the AI doing all that together. That's why it's going to be such a powerful tool. Right. So it's going to just permeate through the entire ecosystem. It's amazing. Now, I, I work in the adoption space, user adoption, change management, and I always ask this question of different people when they're talking about their products. What are a couple of ways that we can help people to change the way they work a little to take advantage of this tool? Um, I think a lot of it is to just be aware that the way that you're sharing, we're trying to help you do that better and right. to continue doing that. I think there's a there's a, been a lot of uh, changes that that this type of change is, is basically saying we're trying to tell you that if you do your work and you share it in this way, you'll actually get more time back because we're we're trying to share the knowledge better. You don't have to just search for it. There's all these other places we're bringing it to. But we do really need, I mean, I think one of the big changes is for people to see that you can contribute to this and it shouldn't be a huge part of your job. We're actually trying to help you do that. And in, in practice too, in the, in the um, private preview, yeah. how, do you, how are you interacting with the um, with Project Cortex and its signals? So at the moment we've been providing sort of candidate material right. for the Cortex to look at, we look at the results, looking at and say actually yeah okay we agree that's a term, that's our term, it's our project, and just really help help the initial training, it's like training a baby to walk, yeah. right? And it's using our data to kind of just get up and walking. Right. Yeah, yeah and I think um, the, the work that you've done on the card, if we can help people to see that this card is more powerful than it we've used to seeing it. It's yeah. not just about hovering over and seeing someone's contact details, but now we can hover over content and topics and, and see a similar together. kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said at the beginning, yeah. meeting people where they were. Yeah. 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 Thank you CJ, thank you Simon, that's been really good to talk about that. Great. Brilliant. Okay, we're good. Right. So here's a scenario where if you imagine there's a lot of news, corporate news that happens, and you may be learning, joining a new team, and wanting to, to read up on everything that you can find uh, as you've joined. So as you're reading, this is a news post, and as you're reading here, you'll see that we've actually highlighted a project. When you hover over it, you get the card, which, um, which has got a, a summary, a quick little description about what the topic is, it's showing you related people and some related resources. And if you want to learn more about this, then you can actually click Show More, and this actually pulls up a, a topic page, the topic page for Delta. A landing page a for landing the A landing page, and, and what you'll notice is that it's got more information on here. I mean, somebody's curated it. We had that definition here that we saw on the card, but we also have additional information that someone's curated. And then this, thing, this page just keeps staying alive, right? Like as people start working on it, working more on it, this suggested list of people gets, um, gets augmented or added with people. And from the resources, you'll see there's actually two sections here. There's one where AI is suggesting it, and if you were somebody who wanted to curate, like really tell people what they should look at, you can actually promote this into the curated section as well. Right. So it's always there. And that's that's the point where we're helping the AI. Absolutely, okay. yeah. So we've made some suggestions. So you imagine if you give us a signal, you say, you know what, this is an important one. And then we learn from that. We learn from what's in that content. What made this document the thing that, that this person wanted to link? And then the AI or the ML learns from that and, and continues to find better things uh, in the suggested area. And then we have um, a diagram of just 
all the other related topics that are to this uh, to this project delta. And, and it looks like uh, that shows you the strength of the signal too. Like there's a thicker line to show the the connection. The very close connection to these ones, and then these are farther away, but they're they're. They're sort of related um, further away. So digital services is related to Delta, but only through these, these three other related topics. So what, what I think you see here that's really powerful is that now instead of just knowing the people that you may be working with around Delta, you could actually reach out to somebody in digital services that you wouldn't have been able to do otherwise, and that's because of these topics. Right, and I, I could see um, potential there for, if I was someone on the Delta project or the Delta topic, um, that I could reach out in uh, two or three degrees of separation to make sure that a certain team is uh, well connected with what we're doing. Exactly, if there's a dependency you need, and then you, you can make a personal connection with somebody there as well. Brilliant. Yeah. So that's good the, stuff. the main part of it. And that's really good, that's exciting. Thanks again, CJ. Thanks. Hey, this is Daryl as a service from Regarding365. I'm here with Sean Squires. Sean, what is your role in the Project Cortex team? Ah, yes, yeah, so I'm a program manager on the Project Cortex team, and okay. I've been working largely on the other piece that complements the knowledge management work. So, the uh, capture and a lot of the intelligent uh, classification of content and the extraction of entities. So, we're looking at giving you guys tools to automate that and enable the automated tagging of content, which will help in discovery, business process automation, governance, all the good stuff that we know users have a hard time doing manually on their own. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's that's the key thing. For years we've had struggles trying to get people to fill out metadata. We know it helps search, but your AI is managing to do some of that on our behalf? That's right, that's right. So we've been working very closely with a lot of internal partners bringing some new technology to market that will really accelerate the automation of this work. And so what it involves is using AI to build models against semi-structured content like forms and invoices, things where you have really clear name value pairs. Yeah. And that's using some of the AI builder stuff that was announced this summer as a part of the Power Platform. And we've integrated that into SharePoint, and I'll be showing showing that at a session later this week. Okay. Um, well, t tell them the n the number because while you might not be able to see it live, people, um, you can also look it up after Ignite, of course. Absolutely. So that session is BRK uh, three zero zero five. All right. And then the knowledge management one that complements this work that CJ Tan is talking about, that's BRK3004. Okay. And then tomorrow, Naomi and Chris McNulty are going to talk, give an overview, and that's CLB50. And so that'll kind of go a little bit deeper than Jeff did and Satya and Jared on the announcement and talk a little bit more about the work that we're doing there. But back to the content classification and entity yeah. extraction. That we have the AI Builder integration, that works great for forms and invoices, but then for uh, very uh, 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 long form documents or very loosely structured like Word documents, we have some other tech using machine teaching, where you as the subject matter expert, you know your content. You know the entities that you, and concepts that you want to extract from that content. So we're building a model building interface inside SharePoint that allows you to identify those patterns, build a model, attach it to a library, and now when you subsequently upload documents, we can go and ex not only classify that content using a content type, right. but also extracting that metadata. And a lot of this ties into the improvements we've made in the managed metadata service. So we're making metadata cool again, you know, by bringing back taxonomy, yeah. investing in the service, investing in improvements in content types, and really just making it easier for customers to manage it, discover it, and use it. Amazing. Yeah, pretty cool. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, Sean. And um, do catch those sessions online um, to, to learn more. Absolutely. Cheers. Thank you. Appreciate it.